Marquesas to the Celebes, from Sumatra to the Hawaiis. The idyllic peace and beauty of the South Pacific lay undisturbed for centuries. But the white man came eventually. He rolled it up, put it in his pocket, and took it home to sell. His great trading empires, like Batjack Limited, the Batjack of the Dutchman Mary and Sydney, reached out everywhere, hungry, greedy, demanding. It was in the year 1860 that I shipped out on the Red Witch, the flagship of the Batjack Line, under the command of Captain Rawls. Mr. Loring, they can go some more. Mr. Rizzo, water. You've had enough, Captain Rawls. Did I ask your opinion? You're getting it. Anybody else who wants to start a fight aboard this ship can see what he'll look like when he's through. I'll throw him in a break. Follow me, Rosen. and cold. His eyes seemed to hold some hidden story. Yet he commanded loyalty and a strange devotion from those about him. I was one of them. My name is Rosen, Sam Rosen, and this is my story. Hand me a pair of those glasses. Rosen, what would you say if I were to tell you I was going to throw you in irons? See? You're the captain. If I object, mutiny. But you'll be making a mistake. Got your master's papers? Yes, sir. I don't know what you were doing on the beach when we picked you up. That's your business. I've had an eye on you, Rosen. You seem to know what you want. I think I know what it is. Nice round pieces of silver. Round enough maybe to roll right into a court of inquiry. As long as they don't stick on the deck there. All right. Our sailing orders call for a meeting with an American ship at Davao in the Philippines. Courses to the Carolines and due west. Now, somewhere around longitude 149, three degrees south, we're going to need a new mate. Named Rosen? Named Rosen. That's for the benefit of the crew. Mr. 
Aye, sir. Ripper. What are we doing on the starboard tack? Mr. Loring's orders, sir. I told you port tack. I thought you said starboard. What's the matter with you lately? Nothing, Captain. Only you You said... look tired. Are you sleeping? Not very well, no. You worry too much. Yes, sir. Now listen carefully, Mr. Loring. Head due north for an hour and then west by south for St. George's Channel. But that's off our course, sir. Is it, Mr. Loring? Don't you know our destination? Davao. Well, what course would you follow? The southern or the Carolyn skirt? We were mapped due north to Keita. But as you say, sir. I don't like it, Mr. Rezo. That man's sick. Loring's been acting like he's off his rocker, ain't he? Bring him to my cabin in a few minutes. Aye, sir. Rosen? No who owns this ship? Bad Jack Limited. Know what Bad Jack is? Mayor in Sydney. Sit down. Know anything about him? Only that he seems to own most of this part of the world. I've sailed this ship for him a long time, and he has great confidence in his captains. But, Loring, a very noble character, protector of cargoes, especially protective now. You see, we're carrying a cargo of $5 million in bullion. That's why I'm scuttling this ship. Come in. What's your course, Mr. Loring? Why, oh, due north. Your head cold, Mr. Rezo? I told you to head this ship two points west from north. But, sir, I... I'm sorry to contradict you, Captain. You said due north. Mr. Rezo, what did I say? West, sir. Mr. Rosen? West. And that's the way it's entered in the log. Nobody told you to sit down, Mr. Loring. Captain, what are you trying to do? Do, Mr. Loring? If I keep changing the orders around, the crew will think I'm crazy. Not just the crew. You're not, Mr. Loring. You're just a sick man. You need attention. Look at me. Turn your head to the left. To the left, Mr. Loring. Hmm. Put him to bed, Mr. Rezo. And to protect the crew, keep him locked in his cabin. Locked in my cabin? Wait a minute, this is a trick. You can't do this to me. It's all right, Mr. Loring. Now you got no more worries. You're crazy. This is going too far. Off the bed. Off the bed. I take it we're near longitude 149. Very close, Mr. Rosen. I want you to remember every detail of what happened today. The corn will connect our stories. Another thing. Tomorrow, make sure this position reaches the ears of the crew. Where will we really be? Right here under short sail. You and Ripper take over the watch. Head her into the sun. Yes, sir. No questions? No, sir. I follow orders. One night while skirting the Caroline Reef under shortened sail, there was a feeling of tension and uneasiness throughout the ship. Rawls was in his cabin in one of his black, strange moods. I sensed that tonight I would know something about him, the man who held the destiny and fate of all of us in his hands. out, Rose. You're not going to keep me locked up, not now or any other time. I know what you're trying to do, and I'm going to stop you cold. I'm going to take this cargo to Davao, even if I have to. <laughs>
guess hard. Like Mr. Loring picked a bad time to break out of his cabin. How so? Look, been expecting to see them bottles two or three days now. Rawls is drunk, huh? Yeah, only not like you and me or anybody. Does he do it often? Only once in a while. He's a good man most of the time. Only drinks a little, but when he gets like that, he's he's bad. Why does he do it then? Maybe he remembers things. What things? I don't know. His whole life, I guess. It was near dusk and we were heading into the rays of a fading sun. Even though the plan was set, I felt that Rawls was destroying a part of himself and sinking the Red Witch. We all set? Yes, sir. Give me the wheel. Get to your station. Captain Rawls' defense is based on the ship's log and Mr. Loring's supposed insanity. Batjack, that is my brother-in-law, Myron, whose illness prevents his being here, believes that Mr. Loring is sane and that the log's entries are false. The only log there is. Yes, Mr. Rawls, you made certain of that. But there are other points which have yet to be brought up. One is that you sailed contrary to orders after you had been relieved of your command. First time I'd heard that. Mr. Loring, did Mr. Rawls receive a note from Mr. Sidney a few hours before sailing? Yes, sir. I brought it to the ship myself. What was in that note? I don't know that, sir. Mr. Arezzo, did Mr. Loring bring me a note? No, sir. He came aboard empty-handed. Empty-headed, too. You're a liar, Mr. Arezzo. Rawls, I gave you that note as sure as I'm in this room. Are you sure you're in this room, Mr. Loring? Captain Rawls. Mr. Loring, please. Very well, then. Disregarding the note. Perhaps Mr. Rawls can explain this in terms of Mr. Loring's mental health. If the Red Witch sank in the position indicated in this log, why did it take the survivors only 12 hours to reach a place that should have taken 50? My explanation to that is that, unfortunately, you were picked up sooner than you expected. Will you explain this, Captain Rawls? I 
I see. <laughs> Captain Rawls, it is the purpose of this investigation to determine whether or not an act of battery has been committed. And in the event that it has, to recommend that you be held for further investigation. The evidence presented. Mr. Prosecutor, I have just received a communication from Mr. Sidney. Botyard Limited withdraws its complaint. Jail don't bother me none. I can get out of jail. But that's Sidney. He's something else again. Once he gets his hands on you, you never get free. I'm telling you, Captain. Oh, Ripper's scared. What do you figure on doing? Picking up a little schooner? Keeping out of sight. There's plenty of roots in these islands. They've never heard of Sidney. In a year or so, we'll head back for the witch. No. How do we live till then? Fishing? We'll cut up old Ripper here and use him for bait. Yeah, well, that's a better deal he'll get from that Sidney. I can't understand why Sidney dropped the charge. They had us good. Yeah, he's got his own ideas. And his own ideas I don't like. I'm telling you, Sam, that Sidney's a bad one. Why, a fella did something to him once, and he put this fella up in the mountains with cannibals for 10 or 15 years. With cannibals! Why, well, they used to lead him around with a ring in his nose. Any ring old Ripper's wearing, he's just wearing right here in his ear. Hello, Munzee. Thought you'd settle down. How's Her Majesty's Navy? Still able to fire a shot across your bow should the occasion arise. You look as if you got yourself into real trouble this time. Not at all. You were at the hearing. That means nothing. Mayor and Sidney's a big man. He doesn't let go so easily without reason. Agreed. He's hard and tough and crafty. That's all I've heard, too. No one's beaten him yet. Does that include Your Majesty's Navy? The Navy has infinite patience. We should no doubt reckon with Minhair Sydney sooner or later. It goes for me too, eh? Definitely. How about a drink? Why not? This may be our last together. Rawls said we'd spend a year fishing. That's pretty much what we did. But it wasn't that lazy, basking in the sun sort of thing like fishing for pleasure. Oh, no. This was a relentless game of hide-and-seek that kept gnawing at us day and night. We bought an old schooner, the Melbourne Queen, and sailed the little-known routes. But at every port we hit, there was either Munzee or Botjack. One or the other always there, watching, waiting. We didn't mind at first. The constant tension of being spied on gradually wore our nerves raw. Ripper worried about Botjack. I worried about Munzee. But if I had known then what Ripper knew, I would have, well... Anyway, I finally bought a map of a Pearl Island from a sailor in a Singapore saloon. We went to see if we could find it. Well, she isn't on the charts, but she's there, all right. Yeah, maybe we struck it lucky for a change. About time. Hard and fast, Ripper. That ain't on the map.
Welcome, Captain Rawls. It's so very good to see you. To what, may I ask, do I owe this visit? To our mutual weakness, Menair. Greed. And this well-planted map. It's a big surprise, isn't it? I'll give you credit for that. The last time we saw each other, I made a vow that the next time we met, I'd give you a surprise you'd never forget. You went to a lot of trouble. It'll be worth it. You see, Rawls, I'm not one of those eye for an eye men. No. I always take two eyes. But you gotta get your hands on them first. I've got my hands on them. So I suggest you prepare yourself for an extended visit here. Well, I thought I'd lie in here for a while, but I can't afford to expose myself to scurvy. So I may change my mind. Oh, but you won't, because you're my guest here. And as my guest, I prefer that you accept my hospitality until I'm ready for you to go. So you'll join me at dinner tomorrow night, Captain? It'll be rice tuffle. Sorry, no rice tuffle. Can't stand curry. That's too bad. Perhaps you, Mr. Rosen, will join me and make up in part for the captain's absence. <laughs> Is that just uh, an old traitor, Sam? Sydney. Come on, boys, make it fast. What's all the commotion? Well, that's fresh water, Captain. I'll be ready soon, quick. Ready for what? Ready to shove off just as fast as we can. It's Ripper's idea, and I think it's a pretty good one. We're not shoving off. We're after pearls, remember? The oysters can keep. Yesterday, all either one of you could think of was pearls. Well, here's where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And we're welcome to them. Well, let's straighten up. But what about Sidney? Well, he ought to be getting used to have things taken from him. Give me those glasses. Take a look across that inlet. What do you see, Sam? Something bad, huh? It's not good. Looks like Ripper was right. That fellow plays rough. I think we ought to make a deal. Tell Sidney where the gold is and get out of here. Come as far as I'm going to, Sam. From now on, Sidney comes to me. You're sure he will, eh? Very sure. He wants me more than he does that gold. He wants us all. I don't think so. What makes you so sure? Never mind. What do you mean, never mind? When I stand a chance of having my head handed to me in a platter, I've got a right to know why. You're not in this thing as deep as you think you are. My book doesn't read that way. Captain, we gotta get out of here. Even if we have to take the dory and row a thousand miles. Well, it'll be that first mile that'll be the tough one, Ripper. <laughs> Joking about the picture win isn't going to get us out of here. Who bought that map? All right, it's my fault. Not at all. I just wondered if you had any plans. No. Have you? One or two? Look, I don't know what else besides gold is going on between you and Sidney, but there's something. And I'm going to find out what it is. Maybe Sidney will tell you. Why don't you ask him? That's what I ought to do. Oh. Where are you going, Sam? Get a breath of fresh air. Shove off. You'll breathe longer here. Come on, get those empty casks back. More water? Yeah, we'll have plenty for when we sail. Now all we have to do is get the wind up, and the gates down will be all set, eh? You betcha. Myola, lower away that skiff. Where are you going, Captain? Get a breath of fresh air.
you are Mr. Rosen. That's right. I'm Tilia Van Schwalen. I know. I've seen you before. Oh, you remember. So it were yesterday. You're coming to dinner tonight, aren't you? I've been invited. Does that mean perhaps you won't come? Maybe. Good. Why? Every minute you're on this island, you're in danger. People watch every move you make. Are you going to be there? Why? Where? At dinner tonight. I have no choice. Hello. Why did you come? You said perhaps you wouldn't. <laughs> we changed my mind. You're being very foolish. No more than usual. Did you see anyone on your way here? Only you. Go back. Go back. How can you be so blind? This place is full of hate. It's everywhere. It's reaching out at you and Captain Rose and your whole crew. You've got to get away. Now. All of you. Through the gate? The gate can be lowered. How? Well, we have one guest anyway. Come in, Mr. Rosen. Come in. Are you alone, Mr. Rosen? All alone. Captain Rawls didn't care to come. He said he wasn't hungry. Oh, I see. Well, evidently you are. We shall do our best to accommodate you. But may I present my very old friend, Karma? This is Mr. Rosen, Captain Rawls' first mate. How do you do? How do you do? And, uh, Dr. Van Arkin, this is Mr. Rosen. How do you do? How do you do? I believe you and Mr. Van Schraven have already met. Well, I suppose Captain Rawls has painted me very black to you. Hmm? He hasn't painted you any color. Still in good form, I see. And it's just as well leaves you with an open mind. You seem to be an enterprising young man. A man I could quite possibly use. But to get down to cases, under the law, Mr. Rosen, you're guilty of barratry. And I know that up here, you have the location of five millions in gold, which I want back. Now, you may have thought that the sinking of the Red Witch was a daring and intrepid adventure. I can understand that attitude. It would have been mine at your age. But Mr. Rosen, whether you're aware of it or not, You've gone into partnership with a very dangerous man. A murderer, in fact. It's a pretty strong accusation. It's not an accusation, young man. It's a statement of fact. To Leah, more brandy. Yes, you're being used by Rawls for his own purposes. Purposes which I shall try to make clear to you. Now, if I know Captain Rawls, he's told you very little about himself and, as you say, nothing about me. So, I'm going to tell you the real reason for the sinking of the Red Witch. And I'm not going to leave anything out. Even though, occasionally, you may see me in a bad light. Are you willing to listen? Good. We must go back a few years. Let us say, seven, to my first meeting with Captain Rowe. It was a peculiar meeting, to say the least. In my younger days, I myself had driven the Red Witch into every port in the Western Pacific. She was the beginning of Batyak Limited. On this day, we were off Macon, Gilbert Island due south at 172 degrees from three. On board, as owner, I was demonstrating to Captain Junger the proper reward for breach of discipline. I'm a strong advocate of discipline. Here, you. Go back there. If you don't want to watch it, perhaps we can put you in a position where you won't see it. Say, in his place. Well, the 
The boy has fainted, sir. How many has he had? Sixteen, sir. And the penalty for speaking back to the captain? Twenty-five, sir. Then we owe him nine, Captain Young. Pay our debt to him. Or give him the other nine, Captain. Give him the other nine. Aye, aye, sir. Man adrift! Get ahead! Starboard your helm! Glass, my glass. Steady, steady as she goes. Here you are, sir. Fire a charge to drive off the shaft. Now, how can a man get himself in that position? We're off the Gilbert, Mr. Sidney, and... Yes, I know. There's a law that anyone who molests a Gilbertese girl gets slow death by sharks. Have you been molesting men here? If you're a Gilbertese, mister, you can set me adrift. If you're not, pull me up out of here. Still a lot of fight left in him. All right, bring him up. <laughs> All right, Doctor. Fill it up. He's had enough. What's your name? Rawls. Your full name? Captain Rawls. Captain Rawls? Well, in that case, hadn't we better extend the captain the courtesy of the ship's locker? Eh? <laughs> come in. Good evening. Oh, come in, come in, Rolf. Sit down. Beautiful night out. Makes me wish I were back in the Gilberts. Well, we were just talking about you, Rolf. Yes? Yeah. Uh, captain Junger here seems to express some doubts that... You're really the master of a vessel at all. Isn't that so, Captain? That's what I said. Where are you bound, Mr. Sidney? Capiti. Tell me, what did happen to your ship? Sunk. Wrecked. Sunk. As a matter of fact, I need a new one. Yes, I should imagine you would. A dory should do. Not for the cargo I'm after. And what might that be? Pearls? Captain Rowe? As big as your eyeball, Mr. Sidney. Where? I'm no fool. No, of course not, but well, you're a trader. You, we should be able to reach some sort of agreement. We might. On what terms? First, that you make me master of the Red Witch. Over my dead body. No, That's no, no, as good no, a way as any other. Captain Younger, would you excuse us for a short while? Tell me, what makes you think you're a better man than Younger? By looking at him. Well, how do I know you can deliver the pearl? You don't. Master of the Red Witch first. And second. A half share of the pearls. Uh, quarter. You can drop me at the next island. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Captain Rowe. Your drink? Ah, it's a pity, but I'm the victim of one of the seven deadly virtues. Greed, Captain Rowe. Greed. I think we understand each other, Mr. Sidney. Now you can set your course for an island called Tahuda. I think I know it. Under French mandate. That's right. Have you been there lately? About three months ago. Captain Junger. That's where I lost my ship. Your very good health, Captain Rowe. Thank you. Did you call me, Mr. Sidney? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Throw this man in the brig. Yes, sir. I'll do it personally and with pleasure. Not at all. I wanted to be sure you understood this is still my ship. I understand, all right. Of course. It may be yours, but remember, no pearls, no ship. And don't forget, I always keep my word. Well, I heard that you do. Now that I've made everything clear, are you ready to go ashore? If it's Tahuda, I'll wait. Why? I don't think the commissaire will be very happy to see me. Why? What? What did you do to him? Nothing to him. Maybe upset his natives a little. Same way you did the Gilbertese? No, here they were going to burn me. How'd you get out of it? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. You ready to go ashore, Mr. Sidney? Very well, Junger. Uh, oh, Junger. From now on, whether afloat or ashore, consider Captain Rawls as out of your jurisdiction. He's on a special mission for Bacha. After you, Captain. Oui, Monsieur Dessay is the name, and this is my niece, Angelique. May answer, Captain Yonah. Monsieur. I've heard much of you, Mr. Sidney, but I never expected to see you on Tawata. Oh, rudder trouble. I'm afraid we shall have to infringe on your hospitality for a few days. I should like nothing better. And you come at a very good time. There's to be a native festival soon. You must make my home your own, beginning with dinner tonight. Oh, delighted. I forgot to mention, Monsieur Dessay, we have another captain aboard. Will it be permissible to bring him to? But of course, I shall be delighted. Very prompt, Monsieur. And this is the other captain? Captain Rawls, Monsieur Dessay. And Mademoiselle Angelique. 
Pacific. You weren't here a few months ago by any chance? Must have been my brother. What was he doing here? He was after pearls. That was my brother, all right. A remarkable resemblance. Shall we go in? Well, mademoiselle. Yes, you play extremely well. Brandy, Captain Rawls. Are there many pearls like these on the islands, monsieur? For the natives, yes. More brandy, Captain? It's part of their worship. Each month they have a great feast. Bake one at the foot of a monolith. Then scatter the ashes to the sea. Pearls are kept in an iron chest in a cavern, which is also the home of a giant octopus. The diver who goes to get them is a hero if he returns, an offering to the gods if he fails. A very violent religion. Certainly no white man would want to tamper with those. Captain Rao's brother did. Was he successful? Not quite. The natives wanted to bait him at the monolith, but a providential rain came and put out the fire. After that, they started calling him the son of the gods. I found it wise to order him from the island. Captain Rawls' brother seems to be living a full life. You know him, monsieur? I've heard of him. Still there, monsieur? Just the way you left it? I intend that it shall stay that way. What is it? Perhaps Captain Rao's brother could tell you, if he were here. Go! We come for son of gods, son of Tara Tatu, beloved of God. My Kaino. Your father has found you out, monsieur. Beloved of the gods. Those whom the gods love die young. Do you ever hear that proverb, monsieur? I have now. It is wish of Wanuka, that son of Taro Tato, come with us to place of gods. They here, Oi.
suppose your uncle has spoken to you about me. Yes, monsieur. Well? I'm waiting for your answer. The fact that you are waiting, monsieur, is my answer. I see. You know what I'm prepared to offer you. Love, monsieur? Yes, Angelique, love too. Monsieur, you have many things. Ships, men, warehouses, and gold. And now it seems you want me too. But I'm not a ship or a warehouse. I can't be bought. And if my name were Captain Rowe. I see. You realize, of course, that he's a dangerous man. He'll kill someday. Monsieur, I've told my uncle I won't marry you, and now I tell it to you. I'm sorry. There's nothing more to say. Of hell, thank you. <laughs> I should like to meet them sometime. Any night. Oh, don't they appear in the daylight? Not to such a good advantage. <laughs> Finding any pearls? Few. Big ones? Like this. Alona. Get us ashore. I've learned a great deal about you this morning. Yes? For one thing, you love children. Oh? Afraid to admit it? Too bad they have to grow up. I... I'm sorry I joked with you about being a son of the gods. The reason to be. It's funny. But you mean a lot to these people. Yeah, kind of childish, naive. But this is beautiful. That's beautiful, too. Our ship? Mm-hmm. Ships fascinate me. They seem so... Well, so alive, and yet they're just wood and iron. Beams and planks. And yet someone somewhere puts it together and it becomes alive. It slides down the ways and it's a ship. It's more than a ship. It's a home, a world, a breathing thing. Nothing holds it back. 
The wind takes it and carries it for 10,000 miles. Every one of those miles, you're free. It's like being a bird. Instead of the sky, it's a sea. You have a whole empire of freedom, sea freedom. You're alive the same way the ship's alive. You run before the wind, and you never want to stop. You talking foolish. Oh, I don't think so. I think people should talk about the things they love. Some people don't dare to love. And so with great dignity, she said to the emperor, the emperor of France, man. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't finished. She said, Sire, if you love me, tell me so. But don't ruin my slippers. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I have something most exciting to tell you all. It is with great pleasure that I announce the forthcoming marriage of my niece, Angelique, to my charming and unexpected guest, Monsieur Myron Sidney. Let us drink to their happiness. You ought to be congratulated. For many reasons. Ralph! The son of the gods seems upset. My little Angelique, too. You're a man of violent method, monsieur. I would have chosen a more gentle way. In my country, monsieur, the family arrange all these affairs of the heart first. But he might drown. Let him, the drunken fool. What you must think of me. The way you looked at me, so, so accusing. But you must believe me, I knew nothing about marrying Mr. Sidney. Why, it shocked me even more than you. And I've been looking everywhere to tell you. Why, you frightened me. But I'm not frightened anymore. You don't know anything about me. Oh, I've heard things. Didn't Sidney tell you where he found me? What difference does it make where he found you? We found each other. Oh, it's no good. Rolf! A man like Rolf, Mr. Rosen. An unbalanced man. 
Who can say what he might do? Not I. And I assure you, I've never underestimated him. During the next few days, I sensed a brooding, dangerous tenseness in him. But nothing definite. Until at last, what had been seething inside him burst through the surface. The natives were preparing a great feast. A feast that none of us who attended would ever forget. It was their festival of the half moon. The ceremony of the pearls. Mr. Rosen. Away, away. Taro Tato good. Divers bring chosen pearl. Bala au kekua. Ele lu. Tato. Only Taro Tato can save pearls. Or perhaps the son of Taro Tato. I, son of Taro Tato, can save pearls. and thanks he never comes up. I'll take that bet.
Tato, Tato, good to son. It's hot. His people happy. I bring word to Uanuka. You rest. Come later. Close. Hmm. Much too close. Well, I guess. I guess the festival started. Rawls, what makes you do such things? What happens to you? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is you're still alive. Only that? That includes everything. You? Includes you? I don't want to ever hurt you. You never will. Well, I hurt everything. Not anymore. You believe that? I believe in you. Something happened. Day in that water. I felt myself floating up. It got bright. I was singing. Everything dark was washed away and I couldn't look back. And I heard your voice. You said... I love you, Rose. That's what you said. It's all I've ever wanted to say. Someone had told me that one day I'd open my eyes and find a new world, I'd have called him a liar. But it's true. There is a new world. And I found it. It's you. You won't leave it now. No. I'll never leave it now. that I made to her. Friend. Taro Tato has spoken. Pearls of iron chest. Never return to sacred cave. They will fly over face of earth in hands of son of Taro Tato. They are his to spread over world. 
The gods are with us tonight, monsieur. Tarotato tell us to burn eye of demon and spread ashes to the wind. Kaoha. Here is pearl. There is chest. Gods are strong, monsieur. Now Rawls owns all the pearls. And every year more. The son of Taro Tato is false. He is a murderous scoundrel who is robbing you of your wealth. In the name of the Emperor, I place you under arrest. Do you submit? For the last time, Rawls. No! <laughs> It is justice of God. It is wrath of Tarotato. I kept my bargain. Oh, there you are, my friend. Now you know what Rawls has never told you. Not a very pleasant story. I kept my part of the bargain. I even had the charge of murder dropped. I made him master of the Red Witch. He got everything he wanted except the one thing he couldn't have. Angelique. She never forgave him. Never? I married Angelique. Now do you think Rawls sank the Red Witch for gold alone? No. His reason was hate. Insane and bitter. He knew he couldn't reach me through Angelique, so he destroyed the thing next dearest to my heart. And you helped him, Mr. Rosen. I wonder if you'd excuse me, Mr. Sidney. I've got a lot of thinking to do. Certainly. And, Mr. Rose, I'd like to think that, eventually, you'll be on my side. Good night. Good night. I'm afraid you'll be back on the ship already. I've got to talk to you. What's the matter? Did you believe what my uncle said tonight? I don't know. I'm all mixed up. Was he lying? Not lying. Leaving things out. Such as? The real end of the story. I... You don't know my uncle. He'd like to pit you against Rawls the same way he did to say. Simply for his own amusement. So he twisted the facts all out of shape. I was afraid you'd believe him and go over to his side. Go on, I'm listening. Well, what he didn't tell you was that Rawls saw Angelique again. Twice. The first time was nearly a year ago. The Red Witch came into Surabaya for the first time in years to pick up a very important cargo, gold. I was visiting Angelique then. We were in the sewing room. Please, a gentleman to see you. Thank you, Jarma. Did he give his name? No name. Captain Rawls, my niece, Talia Van Schraven. It's been a long time, Captain. Very long. 
please excuse me. I just remembered something. Why have you come here? Orders? But to this house. I had to. I've known for a long time that I'd have to. Took you from me, I'll take you from him. Rolf, it's not that easy. There's a child. Bring the child. Oh, by all means, bring the child. Yarma told me you had a visitor. I'm reminded, Rawls, of the years of the locust. It sleeps for seven, then comes up out of the ground and devours everything in sight. Should remember this was the seventh year and kept you underground. Not aware, however, that the flower had been waiting for seven years to be devoured. Rose, please come. I won't leave you, Mike. And you should remember in whose arms you find yourself. Rose, please go now. I'll leave you with him. I'll be all right. Angelique, you don't know any Rose, loyalty. Please. Look to yourself, Rawls. You made your last voyage from me. If I ever hear that you hurt her, I'll come back and kill you. You won't hear it. By dark, I'll have you on the beach and drummed out of every island in the Pacific. Remember what I said. Yarma. Bring Mr. Loring to me. You destroy everything, don't you? Everything. Before Sidney could stop him, that night, Rawls took the Red Witch on her last voyage. I know. I signed on that night. Now you know why he did it. You said he saw Angelique twice. It happened right after the sinking of the Red Witch. Angelique was ill. My uncle was taken sick first. He was sick during the Barry Tree investigation. His will to live pulled him through. But you can see how it left him. Angelique was different. I remember. Rawls disappeared for a month and we were tied up at Valley. I don't know how she got the message to him. But she did. And he came to her. Have you no respect? You came back. I knew you would. I've been waiting. Knowing someday I'd look out there and I'd see your ship sailing into the harbor. The waiting's over now. It's over. Now we can be together. New life. I won't get well. Yes, you will. You've got to. Mistakes I've made. Not yours, Angelique. Mine. All of mine. 
Rose, don't forget me. Never forget me. Don't talk like that. You're gonna get well. The hours I've spent out here, watching the one and thinking of it. You love the sea. Only you. My darling. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I'll be beside you. This isn't the end, the beginning. Angelique. Angelique. Now you have the whole story. All the pieces my uncle left out. Now you can see things as they really are. Why didn't Sidney hold Rawls then, when he had him? Because he's not that direct. He's not that rational anymore. The trouble he went to to get Rawls here wasn't the act of a rational man. I don't know. He seems to see himself as some kind of a spider with this island as a web. He didn't love Angelique. No, but he owned her. And that, to my uncle, is more than love. Possession is the only thing he understands. Rawls knows that. That's why he took the gold, to save himself. Rawls was right. Looks like the one wrong thing in this deal was me. But you don't have to continue to be. What do you think will happen now? My uncle will kill him if he doesn't get away. You said the gate could be lowered? Yes. When? Tonight, I think. Could you go out tonight? If you can get the gate down. Go back to the ship and wait. If I can do it, I'll let you know. I'd better be getting back. They'll be looking for me. Leah. Yes? You won't get in trouble, will you? I mean, I wouldn't want anything to happen to you because of... I'll be all right. Tell a pretty good story. Rawls, it's your fight. Yours and Sidney's. It's a personal matter, and I don't belong in it. If I had the facts before I went into this thing, I, I wouldn't have gone in in the first place. I hope you win, but you'll have to do it without me. It's a bad business all around. If I've got to get mixed up in a feud, it'll be my own, not somebody else's. And I realize tonight that I have a life to live, too. All right, Sam. We'll take her out? Just the way you want it. Make you happy? It's better that way. Pepper, it looks like you're gonna be richer than you expected. Yeah, just so I ain't deader. Yes. 
We're gonna sail for sure now, huh, Captain? Get forward and make ready. That girl. She's an angel. Don't go. I've got to go. But I'll come back to Leah. I'll come back. I love you. Don't go away. Don't leave me. I made a bargain. I've got to see Rawls out of here. I owe him that. He owe Rawls nothing. If you go with him, my uncle will hunt you both till death. You'll never be free as long as you're with Rawls. You'll be running for the rest of your life, and for what? For gold. You said you... you loved me. Don't let anything or anybody destroy what we found. I don't want to be another Angelique. I'm sorry, Sam. It's just that... I told you to disable the ship, not blow it to kingdom come, you fool, you stupid idiot. If you live to regret this day, if you live, now get out of my sight! And you. Yes. Both of you. Thought I was stupid enough to rely on the gate alone, didn't you? Stumbling blindly ahead, destroying the work of years. Now you've killed Rawls. I didn't do it, you did, you, you! You wanted him dead. In my own time, my own way. A man can be alive and still be dead. Alive Rawls meant something to me, something you wouldn't understand. Oh, if you were my daughter. If I were, I would have done the same thing. Where's the Red Witch? When you blew up the Melbourne Queen, you blew your last chance of ever finding the witch. I don't care what you thought of Rawls or how much you hated him. If he went bad, it was as much your fault as his own. You've been hounding him for years. Now he's gone. He's off your hook, Sidney. And so's the Red Witch. That's a pretty speech, Sam. I love you, too. 
There's one of your little brown brothers that tried to finish the job. What about Ripper? He's on the beach. You can scare him, but you can't kill him. Ross. Sidney, you owe me a ship. Really? Well, I should say we're even in the matter of ships. The only thing that doesn't balance is the matter of money. Balance is in my books. Ah, but the books you're using now are mine. So I was on the point of persuading Rosen here to divulge the location of the witch. Why don't you try to persuade me? That will be even more interesting. Well, I'm willing to bargain. Bargain? You? <laughs> Maron? Yes, yes, what is it? Captain Younger is outside. Oh, he is. He has Captain Muncy with him. Muncy? See what I mean? Well, Captain Muncy, well, well, you honor us, sir. Actually, I am not here on pleasure. He followed us from Surabaya, sir. Oh, uh, really? Why? Why? What, what's on your mind, Captain? I intend to put you and all your associates in a cell at Larangur. And I won't hesitate a moment if the circumstance is warranted. Well, then, I can't say I shall be sorry to see you disappointed, sir. This time I may not be. A ship was blown up tonight, just outside the lagoon. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes, there was. I was her master. Oh? Then uh, the vessel was the Melbourne Queen. That's right. What happened? Well, Mr. Rosen and I put in the lagoon here a few days ago to mend sail and repair a ship. Mr. Sidney was kind enough to entertain us. <laughs> in return, we accepted a cargo of dynamite for Surabaya. We sailed tonight to take advantage of the tide and with the help of flares to get through the reef, all of a sudden it happened. That's all there is to it. The dynamite was left over from uh, cargo, brought in to widen the lagoon. You'll find it declared in the records at Larangua. Hmm. Very strange, wasn't it, that you should choose this particular lagoon? I was under the impression there was bad blood between you and Mr. Sidney. Oh, no. Well, no, if there was bad blood between us, would I have put in here in the first place? As my guest, Captain Muncy, your visit is most welcome. But as a meddlesome official? No. That's most unfortunate, because I shall no doubt visit you again as a meddlesome official. As it stands, I shall enter what has been told me in my report. Captain Muncy. I'll walk to the gate with you. Myron, I don't like this. Rawls is planning something. Mr. Sidney, if I mix with Rawls again, I'll kill him. Of course he's planning something. Myron, you know that man is not to be trusted. You must do something. Yeah, before it's too late. My colleague. Oh, what a miserable, sniveling lot Rawls has made of you, every one of you. Babbling like a lot of idiots. Turn back to the window and keep your eyes on a man. Rawls lives. He makes every day of living a challenge. Beside him, you're all decadent, dead. Rawls, I didn't believe a word you said in there. I didn't think you would. I mean to investigate this thing thoroughly. I might be of some help to you. Oh? You'll be off Doppel Reef tomorrow around two. You might learn something of interest about the Red Witch and a few other things. Such as what happened here tonight? Well, I'd be off Doppel Reef tomorrow around two. And where will you and Mr. Sidney be? Oh, we'll be there. In that event, I'll just wait and sail with you. Oh, no. Sidney will never set sail from this lagoon as long as you're standing by. See. Very well, Rawls. But remember, if you fail me, I'll be back. That I'm depending on. Nice fellow, Munsey. Well, Sidney, I'm ready to bargain. 
Your bargaining power is on its way to sea. That's right, to the Red Witch. You gave Munsey the position of the witch? A false position. Munsey's expecting us tomorrow at Dopal Reef. When we don't show up, he'll be back. Looking for you. When I tell him a little different story on the Melbourne Queen, he'll be looking for both of us. You have 24 hours to get the gold. Can we make it? If we can make a deal. Well, that depends. What is it? Half the gold and the three of us go free. Oh, no, no, no. They'll go free with part of the gold, but you and I have something to settle. Done. Junger, get ready to sail as soon as you can. Yes, sir. What are you doing? You had a way out, a safe way out with Munsey, and you let him go. I want to spend part of that five million, Sam. That ship is hanging over the edge of the world down there. Her bow is on a reef, and her stern's hanging over a thousand fathoms of nothing. You mean you're afraid? Yes, sir, I am. She's rolling down there, something terrible. You've got to go. I'll double your wages, triple them. I wouldn't go down there again for all the gold that's ever been sunk. Neither would I. I got a wife and kids. If I had my way, I'd send Rawls over the side. If I had to put him in chains, to do it. I'd go down there if it was worthwhile. You should be made to go down. That gold is there because of you. My own should force you to bring it back. He's a sick man because of you. You've made us all suffer. You should be made to pay whether the gold is recovered or not. I said I'd go down if they made it worth my while. I wouldn't give you one penny. I'll make it worth your while. I believe you would. Divers. Little family trouble. Take that exhaust valve. Well, Sam, here we are, right back where we started. You got what you wanted. Now I'm gonna get what I want. All right, Jack. You be careful, Jack. That witch don't like you no more. Oh, the best 
Target! Bring up the basket! He's fighting them. Shut up.
got him. Rose. Rose. She was waiting for him all this time. Wherever you go, whatever you do, I'll be beside you. 